the first time I did Sleeping Beauty at the Bolshev Theater in Moscow. It was a classical version uh, by Yuri Grigorovich. And as all classical version, it has all famous variations, rose adagio, um, like, like, I guess all classical version is a bit similar. Details could be different, but the structure, um, the, the mood of variation, it's the same, right? And the challenging rose adagio with this incredible balances in attitude, it's all the same. Uh, so when I started to learn the version of Sir Peter Wright, which is, which is performing here, I found some um, uh, differences, but really, as I said, as a classical version, it's, the structure is similar. But it's interesting what I did in my Bali experience, completely different version by Jean-Christophe Maillot in Monaco. He has his uh, Sleeping Beauty La Belle, and this character, the image of Aurora is completely different. Um, there is no, of course, variations, the same Tchaikovsky score, but even the character of Aurora is different um, because actually she, is, she has much more determination, you know, like she, decide, she decides a lot. For example, when uh, she sleeps, she, she dreams and she saw in her dreams the image of Prince and then the lilac fairy like bring the prince to her, she awakes, she sees prince and she decided to kiss him. It's like her decision. Um, and this character is much more powerful and strong uh, than she needs to fight for her love because prince has a stepmother uh, who treats prince like very nest nasty and badly. And stepmother, um, like sent uh, the prince to the war and princess, she's alone only with this nasty stepmother and she really needs to find. And at the end, uh, the end like is happy. But as I said, uh, the story a bit different and the character also different. And it's interesting to do such a different images, but on the same music. So actually, uh, I could say I had this completely <laughs> uh, different images of Aurora in my life. Actually, I've never had a dream in my childhood to be a dancer or to be a ballerina. It happened um, not for purpose to, uh, to enter the ballet academy. It's my mother who, who've heard about competition to Vaganova Ballet Academy in St. Petersburg. And I don't know why she just decided to propose me, do you want to try this competition? I said, okay, I don't care, I don't mind, that, let's do it probably because I had some good ability to ballet. Yeah, they said the girl is good. Uh, and um, uh, I, I started to, uh, to go to the academy. And gradually, like year by year, when I discovered this world, because my family not from the theatrical world, world they're not uh, artists or dancers at all so i started to fall in love gradually it, to to ballet you know like i remember when i started to 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 study at uh, vagano ballet academy the childhood ended because actually uh, your day started at i don't know the the first classes was at nine in the morning until 
506, and then we had also rehearsals for some performances at the Mariinsky because kids they they participate in the performances at the Mariinsky. So these rehearsals, then some days uh, you participate in the performances. So you finished at 10 or 11 in the night, and then you also need time to do your homework. And it's like from Monday until Saturday, and on Sunday I had some gymnastic class. So actually the, there was not uh, free time. But I, I think it suits me for my character. I was really, I didn't have a regrets not to have a free time. I was really like happy to, um, to achieve something, to be able to, I don't know, for me it was always so important to um, you know, like to make the correction of the teacher, to, to remember what she said, and the next lesson, uh, like be prepared for the lesson. So for me, it was pretty interesting. I think uh, these gymnastic lessons helped me a lot um, because actually my body needs needed it, and it was also easy to uh, to take classical lessons after gymnastic. You, I remember I felt um, my body more flexible and has more extension, you know. After graduation at the Vagano Ballet Academy, I joined Bolshoi Theater instead of Mariinsky. First of all, I think because of the invitation from a director of the Bolshoi Theater who was so interested in me and he proposed some plans for, for the season, how I will grow as an artist. And for me, all of that sounded like really reasonable and right. Um, and also because that time the historical stage was again opened, opened after renovation. So the theater had two stages, the historical one and the new one. It means there's many, much more, much more performances and more opportunity to go on stage. Um, it wasn't an easy decision, but I decided to take this risk to, to join Bolshoi Bali. And I remember my teacher from Vaganov Bali Academy, Ludmila Kovalova, she gave me an advice, which I followed all the time when I was at the Bolshoi. She said, um, when the choreographer come to the Bolshoi, you need to be in the cast. It doesn't matter which, like which cast, you can be in the tense cast, but you need to be in the studio. You need to listen him or her, the choreographer, because only that will give you opportunity to grow as an artist. And actually she was so right, and I really followed her advice because for during 10 years, of working with the Bolshoi, I almost always was a part of the premiere, so the part of creation. And it was the most creative time and was really, really interesting. I was interesting, of course, to do classical repertoire, but actually to work with a, a live choreographer who can give you like his personal opinion on how to do steps um, it's always for me it was always so interesting and like so i don't know precious to find this connection with choreographer for example when jean christophe mayo came to the bolshoi he created the original um, the taming of the shrew and i was the first cast for bianca and i feel this role it's like, you know, like a suit, which make for you personally. So this role, it's like a, a perfection, perfect gloves, you know, it, 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 it's my character. I feel completely free doing this role. And it's so rare in artistic career to have roles which was created on you. And this really gift and also the gift was to work with John Neymar, Pierre Lacotte, 
the amazing ballet master from Malanchin Trust, from uh, Granka Trust. It was really very, very creative time for the Bolshoi also, because everyone wanted to, to come to the Bolshoi. And actually for me as an artist, I, I shouldn't find opportunity out of the theater because actually the best people, the, the best choreographers came to the theater to work with the artist. I gave a lot of interviews about this situation, about my decision to leave the Bolshoi and to leave the country, um, because I was trying to be sincere to, to make people understand my decision. Uh, because actually, as a dancer, you can be in, not interested in politics and not follow all politics um, events, I don't know, like not to follow the situation, but but it's possible only up to a certain point. And then the war started, you need, you, you need to think about the consequences. Because if you represent the Bolshoi theater, it means you represent the country, because the Bolshoi theater is the main theater of, of Russia. And I just thought I don't want to be part of the theater and part of the country who represents now war, but not a peace. I also want to say that in the future, when the war will end, I'm ready to do my best to restore the reputation of the country. If it will be needed, I, as I said, I, I will do my best to, to persuade people, to make people think about Russia like about country of peace. And culture, it was, yeah, it's a country with a great culture, with a great like, sport achievement. Um, I have family who stayed in Russia, right? But uh, um, it's a father of my mother who was Ukrainian, but unfortunately he's already dead. Um, so actually we don't have um, relatives uh, in Ukraine. I worked with Alexei Ratmansky the Bolshe, right? He created his version of Giselle and the Bolshe. And it was also such an interesting time to work with him. Because he actually, as a choreographer, he, he sees the whole picture of the scene, for example, but he's also so worried about details. And to work with, with him, sometimes it's so exhausting because he sees so much thing you need to do. But at the same time, because he's so pushy, it helps you to finally to be grateful to him because you understand that actually you did a great job, <laughs> but it's not easy at all. But interesting because working on Giselle, he proposed completely different character of Giselle because she, he said um, she's not ill because we used to think she has uh, problems with the heart. He said no. Uh, she actually, she actually very temperament, you know, like she passionate, she very open. She loves three, three things in her life. She loves dance, to dance. She loves Albrecht and she loves mother. And she cannot be shy and like, you know, like, <laughs> like he's really passion girl. For me, it was a little bit difficult to, to accept uh, um, this kind of image of Giselle because I always thought she is special, she very innocent in one way, like calm, poetic. But he said, no, he's she is passion. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there's really very touching and uh, uh, which Alexei created uh, for Giselle 
because when she she is going like to say to the earth to the grave uh, she sent Albrecht back to his fiance because she she said you need like you need to you, you need to be happy you need, you need to to come back and continue continue to live and this moment of um, their like last seconds together it's really poetic and beautiful uh, I was so lucky when I just joined the company uh, to to do Raimondo like I I jumped right like after joining the company to this production uh, production of Rachel Bajun. Yeah, I, I found this production is very beautiful because it it based on the classical version and you have all Raimondo variations, the beautiful um, grandpa at the end, Hungarian variation. For me, the most beautiful one. I was so glad to dance with Victor Cachetta. Um, uh, we, we met with him, but we never danced together, and it was so nice to discover him as a very supportive and good partner. And also we worked with Larissa Lezhnina. I'm so grateful to her to, to be able to work on Raimondo, on Sleeping Beauty now. Um, because actually my admiration to her is endless. She was the greatest ballerina and also she is a very, very good ballet master because there is quite unique when the great ballerina could be also a very good ballet master. And she has this both side of be able to teach, to see mistakes and to explain and also to help me as a ballerina to build uh, the image, you know, the, the character. So, in Europe, there is different system than in Russia because here you don't have a permanent uh, uh, coach, as I had at the Bolshoi, because I worked with Marina Kondratyeva and later with Maria Alash there, and it. Uh, it doesn't matter which role you prepare, you always do it with your coach. Uh, but here the system is different, but I'm glad that the classical repertoire I could um, prepare with Larissa. Uh, she also helps me, help me with uh, some Hans von Manen's body, and she gives a class. I'm also happy to, to take her class time to time. Actually, I think, most of the rehearsal time I spent with her. I'm going to do Messe de Requiem by Christian Spuk later in February, and also Swan Lake. We do Swan Lake in March. Um, and actually I'm looking forward to do Forsyth Ballets. We don't know cast yet, because the, uh, the assistant of Forsyth, they came to the company to see the company. I think they they chose some dancers, but I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, but I'm looking forward. <laughs> I would say I like reading. I can't remember time in my life when I didn't have a book. I don't know, I think for me it's really, it really important to have this other world. Uh, I love reading novels. Um, like great uh, example, like examples, examples of great literature. Um, 
I think from Russian literature, my famous writers, Dostoevsky and Tolstoy. And actually, I had a dream to stage a Bali based on Dostoevsky novel, The Idiot. And I had this strong dream, and already everything was prepared to do it in Russia. The premiere supposed to be in June at the Bolshoi, and this ballet supposed to create, to stage um, the Lithuanian choreographer Angelika Holina, and we already started uh, to rehearse at the Bolshoi, but of course because of the war. Everything was cancelled because Angelika is a Lithuanian citizen. She need, needed to come back to her country. Then I left country, so... But I still have this strong wish to do the whole ballet. Uh, recently, uh, I came to Bratislava for the gala, and I did with Jozef Varga, principal dancer of Dutch National Ballet, uh, the piece from this body, so I, I hope it's the first step to create the whole piece in the future. I was always touched by this story, and I think, you know, the main character, Prince Mishkin, I think we all desperately need to have in our life this Prince Mishkin who, who feels compassion to, to you, who, who has this kindness who is open-hearted, you know, who is absolutely sincere and who allows you to be also sincere. If you want, to, if you want me to be honest, because I'm trying to improve my English and I decided to read some books in English <laughs> and my choice was a Harry Potter. <laughs> Because actually the vocabulary is excellent in these books. And why not? It's a easy reading, like without any drama. Um, and I read it in my childhood in Russian, so I know the story. And now I'm reading the third, the third book, but it, there is seven. <laughs> so I think uh, like next year probably uh, I will I will read Harry Potter because I really want to want to uh, to read all of them. I think everyone could could find something interesting in this story. Like it 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 doesn't matter your age. There is not like fairy tale. Even adult people could find some something for I don't know something interesting. Of course, the first months when when. I was living here. This time was full of some nostalgic memories. I was missing my performances, the repertoire at the Bolshoi, my family. But now, when I already have some plans for upcoming season, when I already did hear some performances and roles, um, I feel much more calmer and for me now it's better to 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 accept like different culture and dif different country um, and I'm really grateful to people who surround me now and actually the director Dutch national Ted Branson who supports me a lot, who also um, allows me to um, to do my personal tours. For example, I came to Hamburg this September uh, to to work with John Neymar to learn his Third Symphony of Mahler, and it's unbelievable to work with this legendary choreographer because he's he's. He's so unique and special. And you know, it doesn't matter which body you dance with him, always to be in the same studio, to listen to him, to be in his world, it's unbelievable for artists. 
And now I'm going also to to Monaco to work with Jean-Christophe Mayo because I did his La Belle, as I said before. And my dream was also to dance his Juliet in his version of Romeo and Juliet. And actually, I'm looking forward to to work with with him and with Bernice, his muse and um, the ballerina who made all his ballets, who danced like all his ballets. I always loved winter more than summer. I because I love the image of snow laying on trees. It's such a beautiful picture. Um, and actually in Russia, even if it's cold outside, inside it's really warm <laughs> because of central heating. So there is not a problem. And you can you can live like really comfortable. Um, but enjoy some sunny days when it's frozen, right? When it's freeze, it's it's fantastic. It's like it's part of my identity, probably to <laughs> to enjoy winter time. I love winter. I don't have any pets because actually with my schedule, when you need to travel a lot, I just couldn't allow to have a to have a pet. But if I would have a time, I would love to have a cat. I'm a cat person. Mm -hmm.